Hello everybody, it's Chris and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. I have here another 4000 from Mr. Jack. Mr. Jack, here's your girl. I have several other boards from Mr. Jack which are DOA. And I'm hoping the third time's not a charm. This, as you can see, has zero battery damage. Nada. Nothing. From what I can see. It looks clean in the general area. U177, 976, 975, 891, C192 clock chip. That's this right here. These are what usually kill Amiga 4000s. It has a Super Buster 07 with a jacked out socket. Capacitors that are going to need some love. They're not destroyed. A little leaky, but not death. It is currently set for external, external, 200 ROM speed, normal, normal, normal. Um, we have 314 ROMs in here, DF0 internal, and great. What came with this board is this. This is a warp engine with a PC's Cooler Master uh, heatsink on it that is just sitting on here. It had some zip ties holding it together, but I took that off. We have some heat paste, thermal paste. We're just, we're just going to take a good look at this. So this is the warp engine, right? SCSI by William J. Coldwell. Uh, Stephen L. Kelsey, warp engine, and producer Bob Tingley. I get tingly when I use these. I love warp engines. They're great. 040 accelerators with up to 128 megs of RAM. And uh, you get four SIM sockets, 72 pin. They are the plastic grippy kind. So your sims over time, these little side clips that hold the RAM in, like a 4000 can snap off. This unit, I found a 4 meg sim, I just put it in. Okay, just so we have some fast RAM. And I wanted to check the clippy things. I'm going to hook it up, we're going to do an initial test. We do not need a daughter card in a 4000, unlike the 3000 desktop, and uh, that requires the daughter board just to work. I do have some generic LEDs I can test for a low high. I have a 4000, 3000 DIN to 4000 PS2 clone. It's not PS2, so we'll put that in there for just in case. As far as communication goes, I'm going to pre-hook up the serial. That will be for diagram if, when this unit doesn't function. Can't use a machine without power, so we're going to use power off the Amiga kit converter. That is an ATX power supply to the 4000's doohickey. You get them from Amiga Kit. Love that crap. Got them for everyone. You guys need to make one for the 3000 tower. I'm still terrified to do the pin flipping on a standard one of these. And I don't want to kill a power supply that I use just for a 3000 tower that I might be able to test every once in a while. This does give you the extra P9 if you have a mediator type board. And here we go. We are stuck in low. And we have a green screen. A blinking green screen. Well, at least I get something. Green screen, RAM. Is it the CPU RAM? Is it the RAM in the board? Is it logic that is screwing up the RAM? Now what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the jumpers, pulling them off and putting them back on. Why would you do that, Chris? If this has been welded to the board, it could have broke continuity with corrosion. So just give her a little up and, up and down action on the jumper. Make you feel better and make sure your continuity or your connections are good. Okay, so with the green screen, I'm gonna take out my four megabyte ROM here, carefully, and two meg chip is in here, and it is super loose. So that socket is beyond loose. Like, I mean loose. Let's see what we get again. Powering on. We do get a video signal. We are stuck in low, and we get a green screen. Great. I'm going to do the oldest, simplest thing, and that is some deoxid. D5, and put it on low, and just give it a, a quick blast. This is clean. I know this works. I've used it in other repairs. That's why it's my go-to safety CPU. If I could ever get the Black Beast working, I would have a board to test cards in. One day, energize. Here we go. Beep. Video signal green screen. All right, so it can't be this. This sim is crustier than I don't know what. Crusty as in carbonization. We're gonna grab some 91% isopropyl alcohol, 
some cotton swabs, Q-Tips brand cotton swabs. Love to screw that up. And I'm literally just going to swipe and scrub this aluminum looking thing and see how it looks when I'm done. As you can see, just some carbon buildup. That doesn't necessarily mean it is the culprit. Now this sim itself may even be bad, which I'll have to try and source. Now this is just so loose. Normally they, you go like this. So this sim chip here would slot in and then click down. This is so loose, it's just like this. I don't know if it's making good contact. So with the sim reinserted, let's hit the power button and see if we get a ROM screen, possibly. We get a black screen again. Okay, so is it something that's loose in the area? This is all preliminary, I don't know. So we have nothing on here. We're gonna remove these ROMs. Remember on the 4000, if you're looking at the board, low is on the left, high is on the right. So U176 is low, U175 is high, and oh my, that came out way too easy. Way too easy. Let me just try this. Oh yeah. So the ROM sockets are loose, and uh, that's not good. They have some screwdriver marks up here, but they look okay. So this is diagram, and that's why I hooked up that serial cable. I'm going to go ahead and open Putty, and I select my COM port large font, just so I can see something. I'm actually going to make this big. Put the CPU back on. We are 030, okay? And hit the button. Oh, I have a greater than and less than symbol. And blue. What does blue mean? All right, I'm going to fiddle with that RAM some more. There we go. Chip RAM. 1.5 megs of chip RAM. We got diagram, and we have nothing here. We have no CPU type. Look at this. Hey, at least we got life, okay? Let me see that. This camera's having a really bad life focusing. So we have no CPU and 1.5 makes a chip RAM and no fast. Okay, that's a start. At least the machine's CPU is executing code. I'm going to remove the O30 now because we know this works CPU wise. I'm going to put these two jumpers back to external and we're going to put the owner's warp engine back on. This looks really clean and see if we can get diagram to repeat the process. Energize. Alright, this CPU works. That's what I want to see. And that's not what I want to see. The flicky bits normally would take this screen and put it over here. It could be capacitors. It could be U891 taking a dump. It could be this goofy buster socket. I don't know yet. This is the first look. It does need a full capacitor replacement. Will that help this? It's possible. Um, it's definitely going to help if I take out and check U891. It could be crusty. We could have had a leak. There are wires soldered to this battery uh, post, center post. So that's why anything is possible. That use, this is usually the culprit that messes up your fast RAM. Not these guys down here. But I can't do anything. I don't have a mouse, but I have a keyboard on the PC by a serial. System info. Huh. Well, here's an interesting find right off the bat, and I'm hoping it's not what I think it is. So you're going to see right here, it fails. Uh, I'm not worried about this. ROM is at zero. FPU, no. MMU, no. That's not correct. So this is a 40 megahertz warp engine. Right here. Stuck buttons and keys, etc. at boot. P1 LMB, P2 LMB. I guess that's port 1 left mouse button and port 2 left mouse button. However, you will see here in this mess, minus this can, that there is nothing plugged into it. Unfortunately, what happens here, and I'm hoping the cap job will fix it, you see this girl right here? That is an 83, 64, R7, P, D, or L. I think this one's an L. That is what is known as Paula. You're thinking, Paula? That's an audio chip. Yeah? Well, guess what, buddy? Paula and Alice all work together 
to help your boot process. Now it could be 975, 976 because that's mouse control and stuff like that. They look clean. Who knows? There could be some micro traces broken. It's going to be a nice long one here. Continuity testing and etc. I do have diagram-ish remotely. Okay? There's something up with the memory because there's no memory here. I have 1.5 megs of chip. That either means one of two things. We have shadow RAM, meaning one of the lines is forked out. And we're going to use Mr. Hertel's built-in audio test here. Please be Please play me a song. We're going to do the test module. It should chip out those tunes. I hear nothing. Do you hear nothing besides my annoying voice? That is correct. Who is responsible for audio on the Amiga? I don't know about you, but I just don't happen to have an endless supply of parts lying around I either have to scalp old motherboards from RMAs from back in the day, which I'm just about out of parts after several hundred repairs, and uh, sourcing Amiga 600, 1200, and 4000 Paula chips. They're all the same, that surface mount uh, PLC -C style chip. I could put a socket on it even, but I don't have any. I know Anal Logic has them. Ah. Dang, they're expensive. I'm going to have to tap into some of my friends here on the old interwebs and ask them if I can purchase some, if they even have any. Every day I do a repair, the parts dwindle down even more. So while I am saving Amigas, I am also scouring the interwebs and worldwide fungus to find these parts. With your help, I thank you all so deeply. And every one of you guys have helped me save these things. All my Patreons who help me buy these parts and do this with all the labor and the many hours it takes, I just want to continue to thank you. Every owner of these boards thanks you and you thank each other because you have a passion for these just like me and you want to see them live on just like I do. So, I am going to have to most likely pause on this unit and get myself a Paula. But in the meantime, I'm going to recap the unit. How are you going to recap the unit, Chris? Are you going to use hot air or two soldering irons or a hot pair of tweezers? Yeah, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to use. And we're going to see how this one fares against Lorena. There, I'm going to wash my monitor. There are more fingerprints on here than a Jiffy Lube. All right, so I have four megs here. And, of course, the dead 16, there's nothing in them. So it did find that 4 meg. Usable RAM is 4 megs. Bad is 12. It's just the scan, because 4 megs. Now, what about this crap? That's a different scan. Now I can do test detected fast mem, which is none. 4, mem, four megs, usable RAM. So it's running through the RAM tests. Usable memory. We're still... Okay, it must be bumping into the other... RAM. Alright, I'm going to stop this. I don't have a heat sink on this. Let me cancel all this. At least I don't get any X's up here, which is cool. So I have some RAM. Ooh, this is a little diagram lesson. Since I have something RAM, I'm going to do the graphics test and see if I can get something to show up over here. Awesome. Look at that. We have Lisa. Diagram version 1.21 by John Chucky the Gang Hertel. Mr. John Hertel is a legend. He's too humble and he's a brilliant man. And I appreciate all the work he does and so should you. Greatly appreciate it. He's a brilliant scientist. Your brain works on levels that mine can't comprehend. Alright, wait a minute. RGB. That's five. I have RGB. Whew! That means Lisa's working. Is she hot? She's hot. Not death, just normal. Test raster. Button to exit. I guess that's working. Test scroll. Sweet. The big one. Experimental test CIAs. Fast and fast. Fast and fast. 
Nothing. Okay, I have one okay. Shoot! Is my CIA's toast? Ain't nobody got time for that. One of our CIA's half works and the other one half works. This doesn't like NTSC as much as something a software Amiga kit or Amiga test kit would do. So you're gonna see some weirdness. And I gotta make sure that this camera is staying in focus because my camera sucks. NTSC will fail. Well, guess what? As you can see, this 4000 has signs of life. Has some signs of life. We have a, a warp engine, which is melting the thermal paste. O40s run extremely hot. We know why the standard ROM's not going to work. 1.5 megs of RAM and some weird execution errors. There is shadow RAM detected sometimes when it feels like it, and other times nothing's wrong. It also has stuck mouse buttons on the left, or the player 1 and player 2 ports, port 1, port 2, indicating either CIA issues or Paula. I'm thinking the recap will unveil some secrets. So, let me get started on that, and I will report back. Uh. What do you know from funny, you bastard?